This is lesson 1.2, factoring polynomials. In this lesson, we'll take a look at how we can use the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to help us factor polynomials we may not have seen before. For instance, we'll be looking at polynomials that involves powers of 3, 4, and even 5. So let's get started. If we have a polynomial and it's being divided by a binomial of the form x minus a, then there's a relationship between the remainder, right here in this case 9, and our divisor. So as we can see, we took x minus 2, we divide into our polynomial, we had our quotient, and we have our remainder. The relationship right here is going to be something that's going to be known as the remainder theorem. If you take our binomial, the divisor in this case, x minus 2, and you set it equal to 0, then we see that we get x is equal to 2. Well, the remainder theorem gives us an easier way to find what our remainder is. Rather than doing long division right here, what we can simply do is we can take our polynomial and just substitute in whatever the divisor is. So in this case, we substitute in 2. So everywhere that I see an x in my original polynomial right here, I'm going to substitute in a 2. And when I do that, I'm going to end up getting the same remainder that we had right here as 9. So 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 minus 8 plus 5 gives me that same remainder as 9. And so this is known as the remainder theorem. Let's try an example. Determine the remainder when our polynomial is divided by x plus 2. So just like the last question, we're going to take our divisor, x plus 2, and we'll set it equal to 0. x plus 2 is equal to 0, or x is equal to negative 2. Then we'll simply take negative 2, and we'll substitute into our polynomial everywhere that we see an x. So we have negative 2 to the power of 4, negative 2 cubed, negative 2 squared, and 5 times negative 2 plus 3. Now if we simplify this, negative 2 to the power of 4 is 16. 16 times 2 is 32. Next we have negative 2 times 3 is negative 8. Negative 8 times negative 5 ends up giving us a positive 40. Negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And we have our positive 3 constant term. Now if we add all these together, 32 and 40 make 72, and then we're down to 52, we're down to 42 plus 3 is 45. So what we just found here relatively quickly, rather than doing long division, is that when we take our polynomial right here and we divide it by x plus 2, the remainder is 45. Let's take a look at another example. What I would suggest you try to do here is pause the video and try this example on your own, and then fast forward to see if your answer matches mine. So let's try this. We take our divisor, x minus 3, we set it equal to 0, and we get x is equal to 3. So we will solve this by substituting in 3. So we have our polynomial, 3, we're going to substitute that in. And we'll see what type of remainder we get. 3 to the power of 4 is 81, so we have 2 times 81. This one we'll do 3 cubed is 27, 3 squared is 9, and 5 times 3 is 15, plus 3. You'll notice I did this one in an extra step just to show you that um, you don't have to do it all in one step like I did before. Uh, 81 times 2 is 162. We have 5 times 27, so 5 times 20 is 100. 5 times 7 is 35, so that's 135. I'd encourage you to be able to do this in our heads if we can. Negative 5 times 9 is negative 45 plus 15, and then plus 3. And so now finally, if you add all your terms together, you'll see that we have a sum of um, 0 for this one. Now, this remainder of 0 is kind of interesting, because what it means is that this x minus 3, our divisor right here, is a factor of our polynomial. That wasn't the same for any of the other questions that we've done that have had a remainder. Think about what you know about something that has a remainder. 2 goes into 16 nicely. It goes in 8 times exactly and has no remainders, whereas 2 does not go into 15 nicely. It does have a remainder. The same is the case here. So this is going to be known as the factor theorem. So notice that the remainder was 0. This means that the divisor, the divisor I should say, x minus 3 is a factor of the polynomial. And so this is a special case of the remainder theorem uh, known as the factor theorem. So whenever it's equal to 0, our uh, remainder, we know that something must be a factor. So that's very useful when we're going to uh, move on in this uh, section, specifically dealing with factoring questions that are um, dealing with uh, cubic, quartic, and quintic functions. So this question here says, which binomials are factors? So how can you find if something is a factor? Well, we know that if you go and substitute this in, and we find we have a remainder of 0, it must be a factor. 
So we'll do these all relatively quickly. Um, this we set equal to 0, so it's going to give you x is equal to negative 1. When we substitute negative 1 into this function, we have negative 1 cubed minus 6 times negative 1 squared plus 5 times negative 1 plus 12. And so right here we end up having negative 1 cubed is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 6 is negative 6. And this is going to give me a negative 5, and then we have plus 12. Negative 1 minus 6 is negative 7. Negative 7 minus 5 is negative 12. Plus 12 is 0. So what we can say is we can say that this is a factor. So I'll give it a big, nice green check for being a factor. Next, let's try the next one here. We'll substitute in a 3 in this case. 3 cubed minus 6 times 3 squared plus uh, 5 times 3 plus 12. We are left here with 27 minus 3 squared is 9 times 6 is 54 plus 15 plus our 12. So we have 27 minus 54 is negative um, 27. Negative 27 plus 15 plus 12 also gives us a remainder of 0. So that one is also a factor. So what we've seen right here is that we have a polynomial that has a number of different factors to it. Um, let's keep rolling. Perhaps this next one is a factor too. Uh, we will, again, set it equal to 0, so we get 4. 4 cubed, in this case, notice how I'm substituting with brackets. We got 5 times 4 plus 12. We will simplify this to see again what our remainder is. Uh, 4 cubed is going to give me 64. Minus 4 squared is uh, 16. 16 times 6 is 96. Plus 20 plus 12. Again, we will gather our like terms, and so we have 64 minus 96 is negative 32. Uh, plus 20 is negative 12, plus 12 is 0. So that one is also a factor. Well, let's keep on rolling here. This one, perhaps it's a factor as well. Let's set it equal to 0. So we have x is equal to negative 4. We have negative 4 cubed this time. Minus 6 times negative 4 squared, plus 5 times negative 4. Seems unlikely if that last one worked that this one would, but who knows. Negative 4 cubed is negative 64. Negative 4 squared is 16 times this um, 6 is negative 96. Uh, this will end up being minus 20 plus 12 right here. And let's see what we end up getting. Negative 64 minus 96 minus 20 plus 12. I'm not even going to simplify that. I know that that's not equal to 0. So I can say pretty confidently that this one right here is not a factor. So as remember, only when it's equal to 0 is something a factor. Let's go to the next page. As we saw in the previous example, x plus 1, x minus 3, and x minus 4 were factors of this polynomial. Since this polynomial is of degree 3, what that means is the highest exponent it has is of degree 3 here, we have the three factors then, 1, 2, and 3. So if you were to multiply this all out using the distributive property, we would end up getting our polynomial that we have right here. Now, one thing I want you to key in on is this value right here, our value of 12. So in the example that we just did, the constant term of 12 has polynomial factors. If we set each one of these equal to 0, this one would give you negative 1, this one would give you 3, and this one would give you 4. Well, there's a relationship. It shouldn't have actually surprised you in a second here that these were numbers that ended up happening because this value was 12. So what this is called is this is called the factor property. And so what we can always do is we can key in on this last value. So in this next example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus in on this positive 2 right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to help me factor this, because these should be the values that I should consider. So what are all the factors of 2? Well, all the factors of 2 would be plus or minus 1 and plus or minus 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to factor this polynomial by trying these values out. So let's take a look. Let's start by using positive 1. So we'll put in p of 1. I think you guys are capable of trying this. You might want to pause the video and give this a try on your own. But if we substitute 1 in, we have 3 times 1 cubed, minus 4 times 1 squared, minus 5 times 1. And when we simplify this, we're going to have 3 minus 4 minus 5 plus 2, which gives me negative 4. And so we would say that this is therefore not a factor. So that one didn't work. That's going to happen sometimes. Let's try negative 1. See what happens here. So almost the same thing. We have 3 times negative 1 cubed, 4 times negative 1 squared, and negative 5 times a negative 1. And let's simplify this to see if this is a factor. So negative 1 cubed is negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. 
we'll have a negative 4 here, plus 5, plus 2. This gives me negative 7, and then we're adding 7, so ding, 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 we have a winner. Um, we can say that this is a factor. So you might say, okay, well, why is that of use to me? Uh, well, why that's of use is I'm not saying that every single factor that we're going to have of polynomials is always going to be these numbers, but that gets us started. It gets us headed in the right direction. Here's what I mean by that, is I know that that is a factor, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what I know about the remainder theorem and the factor theorem to try to find out what happens when I factor out, in this case, a x plus 1. What is that going to leave me with? If you take an x plus 1 out of our cubic function, you're going to be left with a quadratic function. And from grade 10 and grade 11, you should know how to factor uh, quadratic functions. So let's use synthetic division to try to figure out what our quotient is going to be in this case. So what we're going to do here is we'll take our value of negative 1, and we'll take the coefficients of our um, cubic function. So the coefficients, if you recall, was a 3, a negative 4, a negative 5, and a 2, and if you recall, I like to just kind of write my remainder right here, and we should get no remainder here because we know that this is a factor. If we don't get a remainder of 0 here, it likely means we made a mistake. So let's see what happens. We bring down our 3. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Again, we are adding, and so this is going to give me a negative 7. Negative 7 times negative 1 is 7. We add these together, we have 2. And lo and behold, 2 times negative 1 is negative 2, which gives you a remainder of 0. So that should not have surprised you. What does this mean? This means that so far, we can say that our polynomial, our original polynomial that we had, which was 3x cubed minus 4x squared minus 5x plus 2 is equal to that polynomial that we determined was a divisor, x plus 1, that was our original factor that we found up here, plus what we just found out right here. And that would be 3x squared minus 7x plus 2. So we're getting there. This is a factor. This is a factor, but this quadratic function right here can be factored further. So we have x plus 1, and we're going to use um, what I call with my kids the AC method, or it's known as decomposition formally, to factor this and figure out what the other two factors of this original cubic function is. So 3 times 2, my AC value is going to be equal to 6. Numbers that multiply to give you 6 that have a sum of negative 7 are going to end up being 3x squared minus uh, 6x. Uh, minus x plus 2. Factoring this further, we now have a 3x that we can factor from our first two terms. That would leave you with an x minus 2. And we have x minus 2 right here. What do we have to factor to make that happen? I would factor out a negative 1, like so. And then we finally have factored our cubic function here. We have 3x minus 1, and we have x minus 2. So we now know that our original cubic function that we had has the three factors, x minus 1, 3x minus 1, and x minus 2. We first started by using our factor theorem to determine what an initial factor was, so in this case x plus 1. We used something that we actually learned in our previous section, the um, synthetic division, to help us find our quotient right here. And then after we found that quotient, we went and factored it to get our factors. So we're kind of seeing how everything is coming together right now, and how we're using the information of the factor theorem, the remainder theorem, and even our division from the previous section to be able to factor polynomials, um, cubic ones like this one right here, that we couldn't have factored beforehand. That concludes this video.